Hello everybody and welcome back to another Q&A episode where I answer your questions. I've had a look at the Google Doc and it seems like there's quite a few questions, enough to warrant another episode. So, let's get started straight on into it with the first one from Thomas Hazelden. His question is, would you ever do a James Bond rankings series? For example, list every single Bond film from worst to best, the same with Bond girls, etc. Alright, so... The subject of Bond videos is a little bit of a touchy one. Um, I do have somewhat of a, a shadow looming over me in terms of the review videos which I still need to finish. But putting that aside, just thinking about this, would I ever rank them as a video? Um, probably not. Uh, the thing is, my opinion changes on Bond films in terms of what I would like to watch and, and, and really how I feel about them. Which made doing the reviews quite difficult because sometimes you're in the mood to watch a cheesy Roger Moore film and sometimes you're in the mood to watch a more realistic Daniel Craig film so I, I think it'd be very difficult to rank them for me my, my opinion would change too much um, to do one solid list I think things like Bond gadgets and Bond cars would be a little bit better Bond villains even would they be a little bit easier to do because they're more sort of individual um, uh, genres instead of the film as a whole so those maybe but even then I, I wouldn't do that I, I don't really like doing rankings I find them too difficult uh, I like watching other people's there's plenty of top 10 Bond villains and top 10 Bond whatevers uh, that I enjoy watching a lot there's a, there's a channel called well I think the channel is called Calvin Dyson that's the guy's name who's he's pretty much a, a James Bond channel that's what he does videos about and he's made loads of top 10 videos about best cues or best Blofelds or best deleted scenes from Bond films and I think they're great I really like those but I would never make my own rankings video uh, I think it'd be too difficult so yeah sorry about that but uh, I'll stick to just the reviews and get them done at some point <laughs> all right so the next set of questions is from Ben or General Ambrose Burnside Ben Wells he's actually got quite a few questions coming up so the first lot are number one were you to make a sandwich, what kind would it be? Hmm, what sandwich would I make? I think I'm going to be pretty boring with this answer, actually, because, you know, I like ham sandwiches. I like cheese sandwiches. Um, I used to like jam sandwiches when I was little. I'd like to get some, if I'm going to get a meal deal from a supermarket, I might get a, a chicken and stuffing sandwich, or maybe a BLT, or... or uh, some sort of um, like salady chicken thing, but um, if I was to make one myself, oh, keep it simple, ham, no, cheese, <gasps> cheese and ham, no, I don't like cheese and ham. I'm gonna stick with cheese because cheese is great. There we are. Very interesting answer for you there. All right. So next question: Do I pay here or at the register? You pay at the register. Uh, number three. Has your YouTube power gone to your head? And a follow-up question. How is the building of the volcano lair going? Will it have a water slide? Has your YouTube power gone to your head? Absolutely. I expect only the best monkey butlers to follow me around now and uh, feed me grapes and make me cocktails. Um, sadly, monkey butlers don't exist, but I wish they did. Uh, and how is the building of the volcano there going? Well, it's not going at all, actually. It's still an idea I'd like to do in uh, on JFS server. Build Blofeld's volcanic lair from You Only Live Twice. But it won't have water slides, no, no, no. It will have a proper... It will have a, a, like a monorail system like it does in the film. It will have a proper little train thing, because I really like that. I like the idea of having a, a little sort of train system that goes around an evil lair. Sounds cool. Uh, his question continues... Now for a serious question. Um, how did you become a coffee drinker? How do you drink it with or without cream, etc? For myself, I drank a cup of the freshest coffee on earth in Seattle, Washington, and gradually became more addicted to the stuff. And lastly, do you guys have Starbucks over there? If so, I apologise. We call it four bucks over here. Um, how did I become a coffee drinker? That's interesting question. That's a very interesting question. I don't think there was sort of... Um, one moment where I was like, yes, I'm going to start drinking coffee. Because it's one of those things where when you first taste it, it tastes awful. 
it's like when you you're younger and or maybe like teenage years we'll say and, and you start drinking alcohol for the first time and you think it tastes awful because you haven't really developed a, a palate for it yet so I, I do remember trying coffee when I was younger and not liking it but it's one of those things where as you mature you just sort of become more in tune with the taste and, and, and like it more and more um, I did used to drink a lot of tea when I was younger my nan would used to make it with loads of sugar in loads of sugar they were very very sweet very bad for my teeth but um I'm trying to wean myself off sugar in hot drinks, and I still do have milk, though, or cream, as you'd say, so um, I do have cream, milk, yes, trying to not have too much sugar. Uh, do we have uh, Starbucks over here? Oh, yes, we do. They're everywhere. Um, we also have another coffee shop called Costa, which I thought was more expensive. The thing is, I don't really like buying coffee anyway, because coffee is expensive for what it is. You know, it's mostly just hot water or hot milk, and um, I do find myself like always sort of cringing at how much it like. It'll cost like three pounds fifty for a medium latte or something. It's like, such a waste of money, really. Oh, what does my dog want? Okay, dog sorted. Uh, so what was I saying? Coffee, yeah, it's it's quite expensive, so I try not to drink it. And plus, it's been quite hot, so you know, with the summer, haven't really needed to have a uh, coffee in hot weather. Although it is getting colder, so uh, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I will try not to though. Try to spend my money more wisely. Okay, so that is the last question from Ben for the time being. Let's move on to the next one from Larry Rude Dude. His question is, going from memory, what would you say has been the cringiest moment in your life? Uh, keep in mind, it doesn't have to relate to you specifically. I think I've already answered this. It may have been actually what was the most embarrassing moment I can think of, but they're pretty much the same thing, right? Um, so um, for a more detailed answer, you have to find it in a previous Q&A, but I think I had two. One was when I was very, very young, I dressed up and sang uh, Duran Duran Hungry Like the Wolf at a school talent show with a friend. <laughs> and another one was not too long ago where I got way too drunk with some university friends. But, yeah, like I said, I, I definitely answered that before, I think, that, that sort of question. However, most cringiest moment that doesn't relate to me, there's far too many to name. Because one of the subreddits on Reddit I love is r slash cringe. And it's sort of like a test, like how much can you watch of... What's your limit, I should say, when it comes to cringy videos? And it's almost, it's like a good sort of a, a marker, so... Is this video too cringy for me? Yep, can't watch it anymore. Let's move on to another one. So there's tons and tons and tons of cringy videos on there that I love or sometimes hate watching. So from there, way too many to name. Um, I really do spend a bit too much time on Reddit, but then doesn't everyone. All right, so next question is from Hans, Mr. YouTube. And his question is, would you ever change your channel logo? Uh, the answer is no, I don't think so. Uh, I, I know it doesn't make much sense, but I've used it for too long now, it's in way too many of my videos. Um, I'd like to think that it's sort of become memorable. If you see it in your YouTube subscription list, you'll know that it's me. You've sort of associated it with me, so I don't think it would make much sense to change it now. I'm happy with it, so no. No, no point now. Uh, okay, so thank you for the questions. Let's move on to another one from Larry, who says... Considering all your years of playing the video games, both on and off of YouTube, would you say you are a PC elitist or a console peasant? Huh. PC elitist or a co console peasant? Um, I don't really play that many games on PC, really. I don't. Apart from Minecraft and the point and clicks, I really can't think of any game I play a lot of on PC. I really can't come to think of it. I've got tons and tons and tons of games on Steam. Tons of them. Far too many from Humble Bundle and stuff. But I'm never going to play. Probably not. And considering the history of all the games I played on the PS2. And Xbox 360. And even going further back than that. Super Nintendo. Nintendo 64. I'm probably a console peasant as you put it. <laughs> That's me. Not that I play the console very much anymore. Only for uh, YouTubing. Let's playing purposes. No, I don't. I don't really play online at all, actually. And I really should use my PS4 more. It's just over there collecting dust. The poor thing. Oh, I will play with you one day. Just not now. Okay. So, uh, thanks for the question, Larry. Let's move on to another one 
Actually, the rest of them are all from Ben. Another one is, do you miss VHS? In that same vein, I wish we could go back to the 4 to 3 ratio. It's so nice to see an old cartoon or series from your youth and seeing that glorious, inefficient, empty spaces on both sides of the screen. It has that distinctly non-motion picture aesthetic. Do I miss VHS? No, not really. I guess there is a bit of nostalgia to it, yeah, but I just remember being... You know, the annoyance of having to rewind tapes and and the, the nasty sort of, you know, um, static and all the nasty stuff that will come on, on screen if it's slightly damaged or... You know, trying to pause it at the right moment or fast forwarding and you go too far and no, I don't like it. No, I don't miss VHS. I'm kind of glad it's gone. It takes up too much space as well. VHS players. I think I've still got a video player somewhere. I must do because I still have VHS tapes, but um, no. Uh, I do not miss it at all, really. Maybe, maybe the only thing I do miss actually is the sound of fast forwarding. <laughs> you know, like if there was a on the, on the front screen, there'd be like a fast forward button, and then there'd be a super fast forward button. If you press that super fast forward, it would go whizzing really fast, and the noise would be really satisfying for some reason. But that's about it. Uh, the two part question, the second part is, since fall, I mean autumn, is almost here, what's your favourite Halloween films? As a tradition, I watch a Treehouse of Horror episode, an American in Werewolf, nope, <laughs> an American Werewolf in London, even, uh, The Ghost and Mr. Chicken. And M. Um, what are my favourite Halloween films? What the hell is, what the hell is the Ghost and Mr. Chicken? That doesn't sound like a very Halloweeny film. I'm gonna have to look that up. The Ghost and Mr. Chicken is a 1966 American comedy film starring Don Knotts as Luther Heggs, a newspaper typesetter who spends a night in a haunted house, which is located in the fictitious community of Rachel, Kansas. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, I never heard of that before. Uh, so what are my favourite Halloween films? Well, I don't really watch Halloween films at a tradition. Um, not, not being something I've ever done. I, I'd like to. I, I, I like watching films. I just, I don't know. A, I never have anyone to watch films with, which just sounds sad. But um, really, none of my friends like films as much as I do. So a bit of a shame, really. Uh, if I was to do it, though, what would I pick? I would probably pick Alien. That's a good scary film. I'd probably pick something like, um, definitely The Treehouse of Horror, you're definitely onto something there. Now, for which one? I think I've actually answered which was one of my favourites in a past uh, Q&A episode. But probably something like the Groundskeeper Willy Freddy Krueger one, that was a good one. Or, um, oh hell, they're all good. How can I even, The Shining one, The Shining is just a classic. So definitely quite a few Treehouse of Horrors. What other films would I watch? Hmm... Oh, Shaun of the Dead, obviously. That's one of my favourite films anyway, so I'll definitely watch that. See, the thing is, I don't really watch many horror films. There, There's a ton of films I really want to watch. There's a whole sort of history era of horror films that I know of because of um, Cinemassacre, James Rolfe, Monster Madness that he does every Halloween. And I just, I haven't seen hardly anything from it. So I'm talking the sort of, well, there's two actually. You could have the... Universal horror films of the 20s and 30s and then you've got the hammer horror films of the 50s and 60s that I'd really like to watch you know sort of the, the Dracula with um, Bela Lugosi and also uh, Christopher Lee and uh, The Mummy and um, and then I'd also like to watch a lot of the zombie films from uh, George Romero so some of the Dawn of the Dead films and um, all those sequels Tons of those films I'd really like to watch, and I think I might try and do that this year as some sort of Halloween build-up. Maybe go watch a few films every every now and then over the weekends and things. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get those. Maybe Netflix has some. I hope so. But um, yeah, I don't really have a traditional Halloween viewing thing, but I'd really like to. And it'll be a good excuse to get some of these films watched that I need to watch. And I've wanted to for many, many years. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, uh, next question from Ben is, okay, just one more, I promise. Which of your series do you feel most proud of, putting aside number of views and such? So, which of my series am I most proud of? Um, I've answered before in terms of which LP am I most proud of, and I think I answered Jack and Daxter, because, I don't know, I have fond memories of making it, and I think it turned out really well. Um, but I've said that in the past. 
I... But if we think about my YouTube channel as a whole, what am I most proud of? I could be proud for different things, I suppose. Like, when I eventually finish it, the James Bond reviews will be something I'm very proud of because it's it's a more... I didn't really say this, but it's sort of a more official video series compared to, you know, silly gaming videos. Uh, a film review is actually a, you know, a proper sort of part of film journalism and film criticism. So that isn't even finished yet. So we won't say that. We'll say... See, you could say maybe something like um, the JFS videos. I know that it's a, a mixed bag of all sorts of stuff, including Donald Trump and goodness knows what. But I think it's very good to show sort of an online community. I think they're really good to to kind of put that across and all the fun you can have meeting people from across the world, talking to people from across the world and things like that. So that's another one you could, you could say. I'm going to go with... Oh, I don't know. Let's think of it this way. Desert Island Let's Play. If I had to go to a Desert Island, which Let's Play or which video series would I take with me? I think it has got to be the JFS though, because it's it's got such a variety of stuff. It is just Minecraft, obviously. But within that, you've got so many different things. You've got all the mini games, and then you've got um, the building, and you've got the mining, and you've got the collabs, and you've got the whatever. I'm going to say that just because there's a lot of them and um, lots of stuff to watch. Hmm. Am I happy with that answer? I don't know. Yes, sure. <laughs> Why not? Alright. Uh, and the last one from Ben. He says, okay, last one, I promise. What is your favourite Moe's Tavern, Moe's Tavern prank call? What's my favourite prank call? Well, there's that one that he does that Bart does and it's actually someone there. By that name. I really can't remember the actual puns though. God, I haven't got that good of a memory. Um, hmm. The only one I can remember, and I guess it can be my favourite because it's the only one that I can recall, is Amanda Hug and Kiss. Um, yeah, sure. I'm looking for Amanda Hug and Kiss. That one will do. So yeah, that's all the questions from Ben as well. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the questions from everyone. Um, as per usual, if you'd like to submit a question for me to answer, just look down in the description below. You'll see a link to a Google Doc, or a uh, no, a Google Form, sorry, and there you can put your question, put your name, and I'll eventually get it and make another episode. So yeah, until then, thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.